All right, so Sean Strickland, the former middleweight champion of the world. This guy apparently is turning down fights with other top contenders. Fortunately, I, I don't know what happened. He's going to say no. Now, we know he became champion when he shocked the world to beat Israel Adesanya. Then he defended the belt against Drikus Duplessis. And it was a war. It was. Drikus Duplessis went forward the whole time, swinging big shots, got a few takedowns. Sean landed some good shots, some nice jabs, but predominantly was on the back foot. Score it however you want to score it, but the history books show Drikus Duplessis was announced the winner. Okay, now, Sean hasn't been happy. Okay, these two went back and forth on social media. Sean was complaining. Drikus said, well, why don't you cry about it? Again, a little dig to when he was talking to Theo Vaughn. And he's even blaming the judges because of the wokeism in Canada. And that shouldn't even come into his head because... The judges will not have been Canadian. The judges fly all over the world. When I had close fights in England, people were like, oh, it's the British judges. The British judges gave it to him. There was only one judge, right? That was English when I've had fights in England. So anyway, there you go. I digress. I'm going off topic. So he's got to get back in there. He's got to fight again. He wants to hold out for another shot at the middleweight title. However, as we know, if you don't stay active, if you don't keep competing, you don't keep stating your case, I'm reminding the UFC that I'm here to fight. I am here to be a proper champion if I get the belt again. The division can move on without you, okay? It's happened before many times in the past, and it just might happen to him again because apparently he's turned down a fight with Paolo Costa. So this is what Paolo Costa had to say. But then, two days ago, UFC come back and say, Paolo, you fight Strickland on June 4th. Oh, so so, Let's oh, go! It's a great fight. It's a fun fight, you know, even funnier than... Canoni, I think. <laughs> he accepted the fight or what? Unfortunately, I, I don't know what happened. He's going to say no. So th apparently, according to Paolo Costa, he told him that the UFC said that Sean Strickland said no, okay? He doesn't want to fight. Sean Strickland came out and refuted this. He said, I don't say no, I say how much. Now granted, that might be true. He might have put a ridiculous price tag on himself. And I've been there. When you become the champion of the world, you get paid a certain amount. And when you lose the belt, that level drops. So maybe Sean was annoyed. I don't know. I'm just presuming. I know nothing about the inside situation whatsoever. But he said, I don't say no. I say how much, okay? So maybe he priced himself too high because he was the champion. But when you lose the belt, the stock does drop. Um, so what do I think about this? Sean Strickland's got a fight. Paolo Costa would have been absolutely perfect. Paolo Costa just lost a close fight to Robert Whittaker, as we know. And that was a tremendous fight. And if Sean Strickland could go out there and beat somebody like Paolo Costa, well, he's right back in the conversation. And, and the reason that I say that he needs to fight is because the division is already moving along. We don't know when Izzy and Drakus are going to fight. Maybe it's Perth, August, this year. That's not for about another four months from now, okay? So he's going to have to wait a while. And then on top of that, Hamzat Chimia versus Robert Whittaker, that's been announced as a number one contender matchup. Former middleweight champion Robert Whittaker versus 13-0 undefeated Hamzat Chimia to see who will be the number one contender for the UFC middleweight championship. Whoever wins between Drikus and Izzy, then Whittaker versus Hamza, the winner of that gets to fight the winner of that one. And then the whole time, Sean's just sitting around waiting for a title fight. And we don't know who else states their case in the meantime. Bo Nichols coming through. I doubt he's going to be the guy. But there's always a lot of other up-and-coming contenders, always some people that can make a big case for it. For example, look at the lightweight division. Dustin Poirier just knocked out Benoit Saint-Denis, okay? And as crazy as it is, and as much as I angered Justin Gagey, I was like, well, he could potentially skip the line, mainly because Justin Gagey was matched up and he fights this weekend. But you see the point that I'm making. So Sean, at some point, is going to have to accept the fight. Now, granted... He is very popular, okay? Some people love him, some people hate him. Guess what? In the world of mixed martial arts and combat sports, that's the perfect kind of balance that you want. The last thing you want is to walk out in an arena and people don't care, okay? Controversy sells fights. Being polarizing sells fights. Being popular, of course, right? People, If people love you, they want to see you fight. But if people fucking hate you, they want to see you fight as well because they want to see you lose. And Sean's got that perfect balance, okay? So he needs to fight because if he doesn't fight, the division is going to move on without him and he might not get another sniff. Listen, Sean's become a big, big star and he should be proud of himself for what he accomplished. He should be proud of himself for the close fight that he had with Drix Duplessis. 
Because Drinkers Duplessis is no walk in the park for anybody. He finished almost everybody that he fought in the UFC. He was on a tear, finishing everybody. Took out Robert Whittaker in absolute style. Sean Strickland took him five rounds, and it was a really, really close fight. And the reality is, it could have gone any way. So you got to be proud of yourself. And what an accomplishment it is to beat Israel Adesanya. There is, obviously, a narrative with Israel Adesanya. And if Izzy was to beat Drickus, I'm sure he'd want to run it back with Sean. I'm sure he feels that that was a bad night at the office. I'm sure he feels that, you know, because he was in a bit of trouble for the drink driving and stuff like that, maybe he was distracted. Maybe he was resting on his laurels. Maybe he underestimated Sean Strickland. But that doesn't matter. He lost. So I'm sure he wants to fight Sean again. But they've already said that the next contender will be the winner between Whitaker and Hamzat Chimeyev. So what does Sean do? Sit around on the sidelines, let the division move on. Anyway, there's just some thoughts, right? UFC 300 this weekend, I gave some predictions on the main card, but I never spoke about some of the prelim stuff. Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. What a fight that is. I think Alexander Rakic gets it done. I think that Yuri Prohaska leaves a lot of openings. I am very impressed with him as a person, as a fighter, as a martial artist, as an all-round threat, right? Yuri's the man, but Rakic is big. The rocket is coming and he's had quite some time off. Last time we saw him was against Jan Blachowicz in a fight that he was probably winning, even though it finished early. Tore his ACL and he's been out for a while. I think Rakic gets the job done. Then we've got Calvin Cater going up against the former champion, Aljamain Sterling, okay? Can Aljamain Sterling use the wrestling and take down Calvin Cater? Because that's his path to victory. Is he big enough to fight at 145 in the first place? Yeah, he is. There's a reason why he was dropping down to 135 and cutting and making all those sacrifices. Because if you can make it and you're willing to make the sacrifice, then you do it, okay? But he got knocked out against Sean O'Malley. Probably because of those drastic weight cuts. So now he's moving up to 145 and he's going in at the deep end against Calvin Cater. He says, if I beat Cater, I should get a shot at the belt, okay? Which, you know, wouldn't be the craziest shot because he was a tremendous champion and 135 defended the belt three times. Uh, but does he beat Calvin Cater? I don't think so. I think Calvin kind of has the style and the length to do what Sean O'Malley did. I'm not saying he knocks him out, but if O'Malley did, then Calvin Cater surely can. But I think he will keep him at range, at bay, keep the fight on the feet and win the fight. Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison. Holly Holm's 42 years old. She's got a style, though, at beating people like Kayla Harrison. Kayla is a tremendous judo player, the best probably to come out of America as a woman. Uh, just unbelievable. Former PFL champ, used to fight at 100 and think it was 60 pounds or 165. She's gigantic. She's going to make 135. That is not going to be easy. Of course, she's had the assistance of the Performance Institute to do it the correct way so she can still perform like an athlete. But can she beat Holly Holm? I think so. I think she gets her hands on Holly Holm. I think she takes Holly Holm down and I think she gets a submission. Holly Holm, what an absolutely phenomenal career. She will be in the Hall of Fame. She's already in the Boxing Hall of Fame. But sadly, 42 years old, if she can pull this off, it will be quite the story. But I don't think she's going to get it done. And then we've got Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopez. Keep an eye on this one. This could be fight of the night. This one's going under the radar. Diego Lopez, tremendous. Sadiq Youssef, very, very skilled and explosive striker. And these two are going to throw down. And it might just be fight of the night. But if I'm going to pick a winner, I'm going to go with Diego Lopez. Anyway, Jalen Turner, Henato Marcano. Don't tell Henato. But I'll probably say Jalen Turner. Jessica uh, Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. I'm going to go with Rodriguez. Jim Miller. Jim King Miller, let's get it right, versus Bobby Green, the king. I gotta go with Jim Miller, but I love Bobby Green as well. It's a tough one. When you know these people making predictions, it's really hard. It really is. So I'll just pretend I never said anything. And then we got Davidson Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt, two former champions. First fight of the night. This card's gonna be ridiculous. Cody Garbrandt gets the job done. He's found the form. He's got over the knockouts. The chin is still there. He's popping. He's cooking with gas. Cody Garbrandt is a phenomenal fighter. He can stop the takedowns. He's got cleaner boxing and he hits fucking harder. So there you go. There's a few more predictions for the prelims. Enjoy. Subscribe. Ring the bell. See you soon.